Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I am Cool Quoth, and I am about to take you basically to the boss of this area after defeating most of it in the last video. Basically, the Four Kings are a fairly difficult boss that many people have trouble with, especially if they try it early on in the game, uh, because it's kind of time-intensive. They don't give you a lot of, uh, you know, they, they, give, they give the a boss a lot of health, and there's a very interesting uh, mechanic that goes on in the boss fight that basically makes the boss fight exponentially harder the longer that you uh, the longer that you stay in it. So you're gonna see me attempt this right now, wearing you know some lighter gear here, but I might end up just having to tank it with like you know something like a uh, Havel set and like Iron Flesh Pyromancy or something like that just to. You know, just so I can just wail on the guy without having to worry about stamina management, because stamina management can actually make it so that you can't beat this fight. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go, uh, but anyway, if you're curious as to why I am no longer at the staircase in the Londo Ruins, and instead am, was starting at Fireland Shrine, that's because two reasons, really. Uh, the first reason, the reason I prefer to give, is that I wanted to show you guys... Uh, how to use that ladder shortcut because you never you know you saw me open it but you never saw me actually use it and you're gonna see me jump down to the ladder right here after fighting these ghosts the second reason is that I'm pretty sure I've already died trying to fight the four kings at the point of recording this and this was like my second attempt uh, so <laughs> you end up back at Firelink if you die anyway so that's that's another reason why I didn't start on the bridge I think I just kinda took it as like a good thing but anyway, you can fall down like I just did there to this ledge and climb up the ladder. And that will get you back to this part of the New Londo Ruins, which is really close to where the boss is, if you're using my boss fall shortcut thing. I mean, I, there are, you can easily go through the, uh, the New Londo Ruins part that is, you know, completely drained out now and fight all the Dark Wraiths. And there's like, supposedly a couple fairly easy paths to, to follow in order to get to the boss. But I don't really know any of them. I, I usually avoid that area if I can, and I found that my method of avoidance makes my life a lot simpler when I'm trying to get to the boss. Now, I'm trying to be a little careful here because I don't want to like waste a lot of Estus Flasks because I feel like I'll probably need most of them. But you can like actually run by all these ghosts, and if you get lucky, none of them will even hit you by the time you get in the boss door. Uh, but you do have to watch out because sometimes the ghosts can follow you through. So it's a good idea to kill them before you get there if you can, but I've done it both ways and it doesn't, I mean you can usually avoid the ghost altogether if you just jump right in the abyss. So anyway, as you can see, with, you know, with only being a new auto a few seconds I've made it back to the Four Kings boss door. And if you, you know, just stand off to the side here, you'll notice that the ghost will come through after me. You, can, you know, just make sure you take them out before you head into the boss room. You don't want them coming up behind you to kill you or anything. Of course, if you're out of like transient curses or something, then I just say make for the abyss and hope that they don't follow you into the boss hole. There's one more. Just keep poking through the wall right now. And now that he's taken care of, we can pick up these transient curses that I'll no longer ever need and head into the boss fight. And we'll try to fight the four kings for the first time on camera. Now, if you are curious, I am currently wearing, I believe, the Ring of Favor, because I never, I've never taken it off, because it'll break if I do, and I am also wearing the Covenant of Artorias, because in order to fight in the Abyss, in order to not die, you need to wear that ring. Now, the Covenant of Artorias is that ring that we won from Sith, when we killed the Great Wolf Sith, like, a million years ago, before we even went to Anor Londo. That ring allows you to traverse the abyss, which is this hole at the bottom of the tower. If you don't have the ring on, you will just die, as if you just fell down a very long fall. Like in, in, in any other pitfall area where you could fall down. So make sure that you wear the Covenant of Artorias, and then you know, take a jump down. Now I'm also going to equip Humanity here, so that if I run out of Estus Flasks, but I, the, the fight still looks winnable, I can use Humanity to heal, because the Humanity heals your entire HP. So. Uh, it's a pretty good thing to have on hand in boss fights, just you know, just in case you're on the verge. I don't like wasting them if it looks like I'm getting like completely wrecked. But if I'm like two hits away from killing the boss and I have no Estus left, I will pop a humanity in order to stay alive so I can finish him off. 
Alright, so now that I have the ring of, you know, the ring of Artorias on, you'll notice that the abyss becomes a traversable area, and it's just this, like, blackness. And a few moments into the fight, the four kings fight start. And the four kings, individually, are actually not too bad. Um, as you can see, you can dodge their attacks without too much trouble. Uh, they, most of their moves in these when you're up close are you know, they telegraph, so dodging them becomes quickly up front of an issue, that's quickly an issue. But the issue with the four kings is that each one of these kings has like a very, very large amount of health. And after about you know 20 seconds, 15 seconds, the second king will appear. And then the third, and then the fourth, as time in the match goes on. Uh, when you're fighting one king, it's really easy. When you're fighting two, it goes from being really easy to really hard. Once it gets up to three or four, it's basically impossible, except for maybe the best players, you know, of this game, you know, in general. The average player is going to find it impossible to win. As you can see right there, it's tough to keep track of both of them at the same time, and even though I managed to kill one of the kings, the other one managed to strike me down without too much effort. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, I have skipped ahead a little bit to where I am on my way back to the boss fight. And this time I am going to attempt the strategy that I was mentioning earlier. And that is the uh, use Havel set and, you know, for super tankage and uh, put on, uh, or use iron flesh to, you know, for more damage reduction. And then just stand in front of the guy and tank all of his hits and not bother dodging anything. Because I feel like uh, I do enough damage with my Zweander to kill him if I don't have to worry about my stamina. So if I have to sit there and block all his attacks, then I'm basically screwed. Uh, I also put on the Crest Shield, as you'll notice, instead of the, you know, Solaire Shield, because of its high magic resistance. Um, the guy has this, this attack, which you might even see in the next, in the fight here, uh, where if you're at long range, he will shoot this, like, magic bolt at you. It can pretty much, it does a ton of damage. But if you have the, uh, the, the Crest Shield, which does, like, you know, has huge magic resistance, you can survive it fairly easily. So I'm equipping that instead of, you know, my, my old, my other more stable shield. Just because my iron, the iron flesh spell should, be, you know, take care of stability without too much issue. So I really don't worry, I have to worry about what shield I'm wearing. And I'm, I'm going to put on all of Havel's stuff regardless of how slow I move. So I'm going to walk, I'm going to be walking like, you know, I have a turd in my pants. But hopefully I'll be able to take him down. And same thing, I'm going to equip my humanities. So I can heal if I need to in a pinch, and I have my 10 Estus, and other than that, should be good to go. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for at this point. So, uh, you know, well, whenever I'm ready, I will jump into the pit, and you'll see me take on the four kings yet again. And every time you fall into the pit, you have the same sort of, you know, the same sort of, like, couple of seconds to warm up, you know, to, to get into the fight. And that is when I'm going to pop my Iron Flesh Bell. Iron Flesh, which I actually haven't shown you in this game yet, but it's very useful on some fights, especially if you're like a, a sorcerer type. Uh, it's a pyromancy that turn, basically turns your flesh to iron, making you really heavy, so you can't roll or barely move. But the damage you take is negative, like right? you can see I'm barely taking any damage at all. So I can just stand there and just tank this guy, despite the fact that he's using like big attacks. Now that, I should have actually, no way to be rewarded with Iron Flesh, but... That, that's a magic based attack, so the Iron Flesh doesn't really need to be But as you can see, I am just like going to swing away at this guy. I'm going to circle a little bit to try to you know, mitigate the damage, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. And that attack right there, uh, try to avoid it if you're trying to fight this guy with humanity. He will suck humanity right out of you if you use that attack on you, that grapple. Right, so that's one down, I'm going to heal real quick. And probably pop Iron Flesh again. Iron flesh things I put I you know barely one out. And this isn't a very good time grapple because I almost actually died. Uh, if he had swung a sword at me it wouldn't have been an issue, but he had to do a grapple. So I'm gonna heal up the full air with two gulps of Estus instead of one. And then just start my swinging away at this guy. I get twelve hundred damage on him in that one combo. Now I think one more hit after this should do it. Now maybe two. <laughs> I know I take this guy down, but that's too much easier. And the next one should be spawning in just a matter of moments. And I don't know if I actually use iron, the third Iron Flesh. I think I don't even bother at this point. Now that I've got those two down, uh, I figure I could probably beat these guys before uh, before I can summon anyone. 
And as you saw, the, uh, he just used mag that magic bolt spell. And I was able to tank it by using the energy that he on my shield. And you'll notice, even without Iron Flesh, the, uh, the normal sword swings of the four kings is negligible with I have Havel's armor on. So, you know, having something this tanky is really Now I just have a couple hits left on the last king, which just spawned. And after that, I should be good to go. And the fight is just run over. And as you can see, just the, the difference in strategy made a huge difference in terms of how successful I was in this fight. So ain't the inevitable now, buddy. But I'll actually, I think I'm actually gonna heal up. Well, maybe I still for the kill. Part of me feels like I almost should have like healed up anyway. Just to like guarantee that no matter what happens, I do not die in this fight. Because at, at this point, like I just, I don't want to even risk it. So anyway, you get a Bequeath so Lord Soul Shard. Uh, if you look at Epic Name Bros lore series, you'll understand why they don't have like a normal Lord Soul. It's like apparently because you're not like taking their soul, you're taking like they were like given a Lord Soul uh, before they turned like into like the crazy things they were when they were just like normal kings. They were given it to like protect or something, and then when they went into the abyss, they became all crazy looking. But so anyway, you beat them in order to get the soul that they were protecting, as opposed to someone like Seat the Scaleless or Grave Lord Nito, where you're actually getting their soul. Uh, so it's a bequeathed Lord Soul as opposed to a normal Lord Soul. But uh, the difference is very minimal. Uh, it works just the same in the uh, in the Lord Vessel when we're trying to open and get, get to Gwyn. Speaking of which, uh, since this is the last episode of the week, I feel it would be a good time to announce the uh, upcoming attractions for next week. I have a couple episodes planned, but everything's already recorded. So it's basically going to go like this. You know... Barring some edits in trying to like you know you know neaten up or tighten up some of the episodes, this week will be the last week for Let's Play Dark Souls. So you can expect Monday, Wednesday, and Friday updates as I take on the Catacombs, Tomb of the Giants, and Grave Lord Nito. And following that, you will see me fight Wing, which I will do on Friday in my grand finale of the Dark Souls Let's Play. Make sure you tune in and watch it. It took me about 700 tries and a lot of rage to kill Gwyn, so it's definitely... I would appreciate if some of you know, if you'd actually come out there and, and take a look. And then, you know, feel free to send me a message or, or a comment or something like that if there's anything you'd like to see me do, because I'm, I'm looking for uh, what I want my next main Let's Play to be. Uh, I've, been, I've been with Dark Souls for the last, like, three months, so I, I haven't really been thinking about the future, but... But it's coming to the point where I actually need to. So if you have any ideas, let me know. Send me a message. And other than that, uh, you know, that's it for this episode. So I will see you guys next week for the end of Dark Souls. Keep watching and have a great day.